Welcome to the second part of our conversation on politics and your involvement. We are with Mr. Vincent Kimosop. Asante sana for Karibu sana. making time for us. Always uh, welcome. Yeah. So Diana, in the last video, we talked about what politics is, what governance is. We talked about the influence of politics in our daily lives. We talked about how what to look out for in a leader. I still remember the three things, character, competence, and compassion. I think that's something I'll carry on even beyond this conversation. If you have not listened to that episode, you can uh, look it up on our social media pages on Focus Kenya across uh, YouTube, uh, Twitter, and uh, Instagram, and even on Facebook. And even on the Focus Kenya website, you will find the link to the previous installment of this uh, conversation. Um, Diana, yeah. you are asking something about politics being our savior. Yes, yeah. so we have these very nice ideas that yeah. uh, politics is supposed to save us. You have so many challenges and mm. politics is supposed to fix all of them. Yeah. Is that something Abana. that we should... For us who are in the kingdom, that should not be our mindset. Uh, that should not be our mindset because uh, it, is, it is not even scriptural. Uh, the truth of the matter is that uh, the, the all source, that uh, the only person who can really sort us out is our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It is in Christ that we find security. It is in Christ that we find significance. The, the, the element of our politics is an issue of responsibility while we are on earth. My sister, you know, the way uh, we, we know our sisters is that you, even before... Uh, I used to have lady CEOs in their offices. Uh, the, one of the things they used to have is a mirror. And it's because for them, before they face the wall, they have certain securities and assurance. They want to know that they are, can be presentable. Uh, I, I don't remember any male CEO that who had a mirror. So that differential was, is an, a, an expression and celebration of how God has made us uniquely. Uh, you get my point? So... It will rain outside there, my brother, though. But it is you who will take yourself to the shower. It does not matter how many years. If you, they, they, we, we are not denying the, the sovereignty and the, the, his God's ability to make you clean. We, 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 and he has done that in the past, uh, based on the children of Israel, who they grew and they, you know, that story is there. But where we are now, as we pray for him to give us rain, we have a responsibility to go to the shower so that we do what? We are clean. The point is, there are issues that politics can only solve. Politics can address national security. Politics can address the issue of uh, education, proper infrastructure, water, the issue of uh, uh, food security. There are things that uh, it is a, it's an instrument that God has provided for a certain responsibility. We will be irresponsible if we abdicate those that our personal responsibilities from them. Um, po politics cannot get into the family. How you raise up and train your children is a responsibility God has given to a man and to a woman who are in a relationship as a husband and wife. So the, le let, us, uh, let us be careful not to sell politics as, as our all responsibility. We will be encouraging laziness. We will be encouraging irresponsibility on the part of the citizen. Um, it, it, is, it is Mother Teresa who said that if we want to get the wall clean, let everybody clean outside their houses. What happens then? Will the government can take care of the common areas. So uh, I, 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 I know the power and the influence of politics, but let us be careful to, call, to send the right signal. Mm. Even as we tell Christians to be engaged in politics, my brother, it is up to you to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. The government will not come and read the Bible for you. The government will not come and pray for you even though they have a, a national responsibility. So yeah. let us understand that politics is the journey of us getting the right governments. There are responsibilities that only governments can do, but we have our own individual responsibilities. Mm. And you know, uh, the good book, or not the good book, there is a song that uh, for some of us who, who, have, uh, who, who, who are older than you, remember the song that says, Stand up, stand up for Jesus. But there is one song there, that's, there is one stanza that says, Where duty calls, or danger, or danger be never, never wanting there. Where personal responsibility is required, be never wanting there. Mm. I think that uh, helps me sort uh, address that issue. And we can scale up that conversation. Yeah. Because uh, 
Christians mm. would uh, and people who and I'm now talking about Christians who take in their Christian responsibility seriously. Yeah. yeah. They are reading their Bible. They are going for fellowship. They are in prayer. Uh, they are active in community. They are active in community. But when it yeah. comes to politics, mm. they say it's a dirty game. It's a it's a wrong theology. I do not want to. It's go a there. wrong theology. It's a wrong theology. Wrong teaching and wrong modeling by those who have gone ahead of us. Mm. It's actually uh, it is. Uh, it is it's wrong discipleship. Mm. So what does what does it mean for the country when Christians are not stay away? Yeah, are, are staying away from the, politics. The, uh, Matthew five uh, thirteen to sixteen says Jesus says we are the light and the salt, salt of the world, and we are warned there that if the, if the salt uh, loses its saltness, what happens? It is of no use. And the truth of the matter, we've had places whereby we know Christians are of no use because they have lost their saltiness. Mm -hmm. When you say politics is dirty, yeah, and you have been told that you are, it means um, it's not tasty. That's the other word. It means that there is no, there is no light. It is done by dark people. What do you expect? You who has the light, can we complain that they, this room is, uh, if you are holding the light and this room is dark, Oh, who is to blame? The darkness or you who is, who is not spotlighting? Actually, <coughs> there is uh, something uh, John Stott says in yeah. the book Contemporary Christian mm. that when you get into a dark room, you don't start complaining it's dark. Yeah. What you do is to light. Light, just, just light. light and, 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 and the beauty is that light, the smaller the light, the, uh, the smallest light is brightest in the darkest room. Mm. Even the Bible says, where sin abound, what happened? Even grace abound the more you are uh, focused people so for me i have been in government i have seen what your light can do then uh, maybe at the right time we can share this story yeah. you your light can make a difference mm. uh one the challenge is uh, because of and i'm happy we've gotten it it's wrong discipleship the if you put salt Nasikia, nyama itakuwa na utamu kwa sababu ya nini? Ya chumvi. Lakini, eh, nyama, eh, ile test yake itakuwa ni ya test ya chumvi. Sindio? Lakini hiyo chumvi haitakuwa na test ya nyama. If you put salt into meat, the meat will be salty, but the salty will not be, the salt will not be meat. If it, if I can use that abbreviation. So it is our saltiness. And, 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 I, I, we, and the beauty of it is that God knows that we are in a fallen world. The issue is, are we trying? I'm very happy. Uh, there was a time this conversation would not happen in the focus circles because we were not there. But now we are ha happening. I'm happy we have parliamentarians who trace their roots into focus. I was even discussing this. Uh, we need, uh, we require think tanks. The, the Democratic Party has their democratic uh, 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 institute, DI, yeah. the, the same to the Republican Institute in the US, they have think tanks, they have institutions who are thinking on how to advance their courses in the marketplace. We require such kind of frameworks. I'm very happy uh, and uh, the, thank God for, I've been involved in the establishment and founding of institution, the Kenya Christian Professionals Forum. We are lighting the light in ensuring that our policies and our programs around family and the protection of the rights to life and religious freedoms uh, are in line with our values. Uh, uh, ILA, the International Institute for Legislative Affairs, in terms of spotlighting the laws and the policies that come out of Parliament to ensure that they advance justice, righteousness and fairness. Uh, Leadership Association of Kenya. Um, uh, these are institutions that have been part of. And, and when we, 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 the, 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 we, we, we are keeping the light among ourselves and the salt among ourselves. Instead of taking the salt there, can I tell you one of the things I'm really thankful to God is that God has not called us to success according to the standards of men. God has called us to faithfulness. Jesus says, will you be faithful? It's not about were you successful. Success and the benchmark of success is not in our eyes. Success is in the script of the master when the time for accountability when we are bringing in the sheaves when we are coming back and the master is coming and telling us what talents did you have what did you do he will say you give me two i had a two good and faithful servant you gave me five and i brought five so the the, the issue is it is not succeeding according to the standards of men and and this for me helped me because i used to think engaging in politics
uh, means uh, running for office, succeeding as a member of parliament. Now, my understanding in the space became clear. As, a, as an expert in policy development, if I develop the right policies, I influence 30 million or 40 million people. So with that, we've done like 40, uh, five bills through parliament. The, the buses that are painted yellow is part of my work. I was not a member of parliament, but today you have buses painted yellow. There are smoke-free zones, there are taxes, so, and many others. They are enclaimed assets regime, and I'm thankful to God for those opportunities that being in politics is not necessarily uh, uh, standing and being a member of parliament. There are those who are in politics like Daniel. So my model is Daniel, Nehemiah. He was just giving uh, Jews to a king. And as a result of his political engagement, we see uh, the, the, the wall in Jerusalem uh, built. Ezra, who was uh, a, a scribe reading the word of God as a result of his leadership, he restores spiritually people, but also is politically engaged in the sense that he is engaging those who are in politics to do what? To make sure that people are directed according to the word of God. Mm -hmm. So this applies to even to those two pastors. This applies to focus, applies to institutions. Uh, let's not be blinded. The kingdom of God and God's agenda is not just limited to the church. As in God is also the God of the universe. How we take care of our environment. How we raise the next generation. Mm -hmm. How, how we, 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 we are taking care of the widows, the orphans. You know, when we think about from a kingdom perspective, you know, Jesus did not come and to give us a church. Eh? Mm -hmm. Jesus gave, and he came with a kingdom agenda. The church is only the instrument for advancing that agenda. agenda. So when you understand cumulatively, what happens? We will not be fascinated by stadiums and big buildings they're building, but by the number of people we are producing who have the kingdom mind. Okay. And when I actually think about what as believers we deny yeah. the world mm -hmm. when we don't engage in these spaces, it's the issue of justice, yeah. it's the issue of equality, yeah. you know, it's the issue of fairness and the human dignity that the biblical principles from the Bible that we read mm. actually require us to live yeah, out and those. And remember there are four people that yeah. God really, uh, when you touch him, you touch his heart, the, the, the fatherless or the orphans, the widows the foreigners which is the aliens and the other one is the poor uh, when you are not who will give those perspectives who will give those dimensions it is us who are who are touched and aligned with the word of god who will present those perspectives one I'll, I'll, let me tell you one of the things that uh, i don't know maybe i should say this one of the things that drove me when i was leading the advocacy work on unclaimed assets is the day i understood this money belongs to widows and orphans my brother, I could not sleep because the Bible says that he is the father to the fatherless and the husband to the widows. So if I can get this regime in place and widows and orphans get their money, I can go before the Lord and say, Father, Lord, in the time you allowed us to, this is what we did for your kingdom. And, and, and that for me gives me so much joy because he says that we should use our talents, we should use our skills. At the Kenya Christian Professionals Forum, we challenge each other. He says that just as Moses was told, what do you have in your hand? And he said, I have a staff. That staff signified his authority. He was his profession. He was a shepherd. What do you have? If you are an IT person, it is the use of those IT skills to advance and to tell his agenda better. If I'm a lawyer, how am I advancing that and giving perspectives of justice? If I am an economist, how am I uh, contributing to plans that are actually ensuring that the, 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 this, the vulnerable are speaking to? This is in Isaiah says that uh, sp uh, pursue justice, speak for the fatherless. We cannot... Uh, we cannot shock. We cannot deny our responsibility. And if we, read, yeah. we actually read the Bible fully, these are things that we should be living out. Mm. These are things that we should be seeing them in our day-to-day -day lives, yeah. challenging our yeah. thinking, mm. challenging and renewing our mind mm. and our engagement. Yeah. And even when you're choosing a career, you are those things are ringing in your mind. I'll tell you this. Uh, we, you know, when we're outside here, we meet people who have had it, we meet people who have gotten it, uh, who have, uh, you know, those asp small short-term aspirations. But as you, we draw close and we get to know him, the things that matter most, my sister, I am telling you this, I've been reflecting a lot on what Paul says, that I do not consider, you know, a Pharisee of Pharisees. You know, he has a good CV. Some of us, you know, when we talk about CVs, that guy even traces his ancestry, human ancestry, all the way to Abraham. And he says, but I consider all that a dream, that I might know him. And the power of his resurrection, the fellowship 
over himself and say there is something if, if we can uh, if we are speaking to church leaders we're speaking to our churches to focus on discipleship one of the things we have to do is to grow a people who has who are solely and totally sold out to advancing the cause of Christ because the the politics the these spaces are only an expression of that which is alive within us yeah. I, you've talked about institutions, yes. the church, focus, mm. KCPF, yes. uh, even K lawyers, yes. our Christian, yeah. Kenya Christian yes. lawyers, forum. Yes. Mm. and there are many institutions that are doing a lot of good work mm. and preparing people mm. and challenging people and mm. uh, holding people accountable. Uh, but can we talk about the individual? Yes. I, I, I am a student. The individuals who make those institutions. Yeah, I'm a student yes. in, a, in a Christian union. Yeah. And the CU has always had these good programs and the government, NCCK and mm. other religious organizations are doing a good job in preparing people. What then is my responsibility? When I step, when, I, when, I, when this podcast is over, uh, what, what, what things come out on top the, of your now, mind? I think number one is your commitment to following and uh, living for Christ. Let, let, so that we start, we lay the proper foundation. For me, the registering as a voter, going for an election, participating, is a fruit. Mm. Uh, you, the, the, the good book, I think in Romans, says that if the, if the root is holy, the branches will be holy. So one, at times we focus so much on branches and, the, and, the, and people bearing fruit, but you know they are not connected with who? With the, with the, with the vine. So number one is that abide in the Lord. Even for you, even for uh, you, I'll tell you, uh, let us first tell people the first place is uh, getting uh, uh, and knowing that our true source of identity, security, and significance comes from Christ and Him alone. Mm -hmm. Outside that, we are no people. Then, therefore, the number two thing in the Word of God, and it's one of my favorite uh, scriptures when I uh, am invited to, even now you tell me to give a someone in the midst of this, I, uh, we are good to go. Uh, first, sorry, Second Peter chapter number 1 uh, from verses 5 to 10. And I'll just highlight a few verses. It says therefore. In, from verses 1 it says that we have been given a privilege to be partakers of his divine nature. That, that, the way, that our salvation, my brother, we have an opportunity, my sister, to be part of his divine nature. That's from one to three. Then now five says, therefore, meaning it is a build-up of the previous conversation. Since we've gone to yeah. uh, dance and drama. Add to your faith. So the first place, it begins with Christ. Add, therefore, this faith that we have to Christ, it least things that we are supposed to add. Number one is the issue of knowledge. Then there is the issue of brotherly kindness, endurance, you know, all, all that, including love. Now, verse number eight says that if you possess these qualities in increasing measure, meaning that if you possess knowledge, if you possess love, if you possess goodness in increasing measure, they will keep you from being ineffective and unproductive in your knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. What does that mean? Then it's possible for us to be in the faith, yet become unproductive and ineffective. In fact, one thing we should be addressed is ineffective and unproductive Christians. Because they are not doing what? They are not adding to their faith. So one thing I'll tell people, add to your faith knowledge on community engagement, on even personal health, on even wealth, these issues we are, and then take practical steps. Like, um, uh, uh, so practical steps, since we are discussing politics today, is be aware, what are the needs around your community? Mm -hmm. uh, I'm currently, because uh, I was, because uh, let me start with myself, so that, because it's easy to point people, but if I point myself, I start. Um, I, 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 I was challenged by my friends, with all this knowledge, speaking here and there, why don't you come and run for office? I told them, I have been able to manage campaigns and I know how much expensive and truly I don't have enough resources to do that work. But I will be engaged in this election. So what am I doing? I'm chairing two campaigns. One for governor, one for a member of parliament. So with that, that is my contribution because I've identified people, they are not perfect. I know they can make a difference. So take steps, register as a voter, don't take bribes. Okay, and, and have, begin that conversation where you are. Let me tell you, when you begin shining your light there, what is going to happen? The Bible says then the world will see. Because they are yearning for the manifestation. For the what? 
for the sons, sons of, of the kingdom. kingdom. So begin there, slowly by slowly, slowly by slowly, partner with churches. Why, why not start? Even Jesus says that begin from Jerusalem, then Judea, uh, Samaria. Uh, Samaria, Judea, and to the rest of the world. What are we doing where we are? But uh, elections are here with us yes. in about five uh, months. Five months, yeah. yeah. Actually, in six months, you have a new president. You have a new president. Yes. Tell us why I should wake up early. I assume you have registered as a voter. But uh, beyond registering, you know, going to the ballot after I have contemplated these things and known the kind of leader I want to choose, why should I take a break from my normal work and even school and other activities to then queue? First Corinthians, First Corinthians 13 says, let these three things remain. It's 13, yes. Uh, faith, love, hope, and love. Above all, this is what? Love. love. One of the things is that we should stop, we should not be cynic. Uh, avoid saying we are people of hope. Jesus has yet to come six, uh, two thousand years, and we are still preaching him. So we we have to keep hope alive. As I said, it is not about going for the ideal; it is keeping our focus on the ideal, but taking practical steps where we are. The MCA we will elect, the woman rep we will elect, the, we, will be, we will have disappointments. But at least for your responsibility, make your contribution that I elected so and so. Uh, number two is that infuse people with hope. I, I meet so many people who, like, where was I? We were in a discussion, uh, it was this week, yes, Monday. And I could see a lot of discouragement, dissolution. And I told people, all what you're saying is true. But remember, we are supposed to take the place of, uh, of Joshua together with Caleb. They went to for, the, for, the, for, the, um, for the spying, mm. but they saw things differently. And that is the beauty of the people of faith. That we not only see things as they are, we see things as they should. Because we see them as the world, as the Christ has enabled us. So, Diana... Uh, will tell us, let's keep the hope alive. Let's talk positively about our country. Mm -hmm. I, I, one of the things that for me I'm very thankful about even this politics, I, and I will say in this, is that, can you imagine, uh, look at our central part of our country. There were times they, they, they could only believe that they are secure in this country if one of their own is the president. Today, they are in the champions of the two camps. They, they have realized that life, that for me is something to be celebrated. That people have realized, ah, kumbata in Ezenda Malipengina. Now, you, uh, you know, we should be able to see what God is doing in our midst. Mm. Even just having the yes. president and the deputy on different sides in our country. And the things that, that those are things to be thankful for because South Sudan, yeah. things have gone south as yeah. a result of that. As a result of so the we, 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 when you look, that's the beauty. That's why, let me, one of the things that I'll, I, I know I've said, I've used this word a lot about one of the things, but this one I have to use this. Mm. Is the, for me, this journey of being in this space has helped me appreciate the, the immutability and the truthfulness of the word of God. When he says, give thanks in all situations. You know one of the things, if we begin from a place of thanksgiving, what will happen? Our lenses change. Mm. We realize that, wow, <clears throat> we are healthy and strong. We, there are people who have not made it to 2022. So the, the, when we begin from a place of thanksgiving, a place of responsibility, our tongues change. We are not denying that there is no corruption. We are not denying that there is no poverty. We are not denying public debt has gone. We are not. But in spite of that, the, the story of the Lamentation, chapter 3, that one thing I bring to mind, and therefore I have hope, because of your, the Lord's faithfulness and his mercies that are new every day, what happens? Uh, as in that inspires us to take action. So I'll tell you, uh, you, you, it's not, remember those things, uh, success is in God's eyes. And God wants us is to be faithful wherever we are. Uh, keep the ideal, take practical steps. Thank you for watching, thank you for listening. We look forward to seeing you on our next episodes. Peace out.